Hello, my queens. Okay, this is The Sit Down. I'm here with the one, the only Michael Arsenault, author of the wonderful new book. It's out today, I Can't Date Jesus. Love, sex, family, race, and other reasons I put my faith in Beyonce. That's a damn good I was like a, a mouthful. Thank you for getting <laughs> all that out. You have First to say try, it all. Yes. It's worth it. It's worth it. Congratulations. Thank you. Your Thank book you. is out today. I'm so excited for people to read it. I can hear people laughing now as they're like... <laughs> that, that was the goal. Yeah. That, that was the goal. I didn't want to be sad. You didn't want to be sad. And, and you know, you go through some some challenging, you know, experiences talking about coming out, yeah. religion, dealing with your family, but it's also very funny. How did you do that? My life is a mess, uh, admittedly. <laughs> but one thing I wanted to do is that I just think when I read, like, David Sedaris or, like, Augustine Burroughs, like, I love that they could be basically messed up and mm -hmm. still find the humor in it. Mm -hmm. So even, like, in the, the challenges I had growing up, like, everyone in my immediate family is funny. Okay. So for me, I just wanted to acknowledge that things are hard, but to, like, I think my spirit is essentially is to make you laugh and to make you think, and I wanted that to kind of pour out through the book. Um, I think, you know, certain narratives are kind of like just deal, deal in the pathos are necessary still, but that just personally was not something I wanted to mm -hmm. focus on more, mostly. Yeah. I love it. And I, yeah, I think we, we need room for these different kinds yeah. of stories, particularly from, from black writers, from right. like queer writers, right? Because we, we didn't all have well, A funny stories. note I got in this uh, very challenging process mm -hmm. to sell the book was like, oh, that's been done before. Yeah. And my agent would like scream like, really where? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, bitch, show me some examples. Yeah, uh -uh. yeah. I think, I, I think every writer of color I've ever spoken to about selling a book has had to deal with the, oh, we've heard that before. Yeah, yeah. You, you hear that from some black people sometimes. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, so something you examine in the book um, is the fact, you know, a Sean down, Houston. Yes. <laughs> Houston, shout out, to, shout out to Harm Clark. Uh -huh. Yes. You've been here. You know that you know your town. Uh, you know, coming from a family and your mother being very Catholic, um, and and na navigating your <laughs> yeah, she might be watching. Uh, navigating your deep love for your mother. Yes. Um, struggling with coming out to her, mm -hmm. right, and, and 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 reconciling this, and you use the term recovering Catholic. So how how did you navigate that experience? Well, I'm still navigating my mother. Mm -hmm. um, I say that with all the love and mm -hmm. fear that most sons have. Okay. <laughs> um, I think for me, uh, one thing I want to communicate in the book sometimes mm -hmm. is like sometimes you have to allow gray. Like I know when people challenge when you write memoirs like at a certain age, like mm -hmm. I'm only 34 years old, but I definitely felt like I had a story to tell and it was mm -hmm. important at this point. Um, the thing about my parents, particularly uh, my mother, but both, um, is that I knew I would have to create my own closure. Mm. And I think you, so often, particularly in narratives like films and TV, you kind of see one or the other, like there's this big reunion or mm -hmm. like there's a completely like a push out. Mm -hmm. What happens if you're stuck in this weird middle where like right. you love someone, but they fundamentally believe something about your part of your identity? Like, how do you reconcile that? And it's an ongoing challenge, but I just kind of wanted to communicate like that gray area and to say, you know, I really love my mother. Um, I'm hopeful that one day maybe something will change. But if not, I need to make peace with the reality that some people will not accept me, even those that gave me birth. Mm -hmm. And I have to find my own self um, love to carry me through that and create my own family yeah. and then hope for the best in those situations. I so appreciate you making space for that because I think the, the truth is most people are living in the gray area, right? right? Um, well, you know, <laughs> I, I think it's interesting the way that you, you're, you're writing about your relationship to your mom and your family and that it is, like you said, it is very much a works in progress. It is. And stakes are high. Right. This is not a casual situation. But on the other hand, you, you know, you've been writing on Line for some time now uh, and are so good. Thank you. And really candid <laughs> I about your life as a hoe out here in the streets. And I just was like, you know, how do you. Ho zero. Like, ho not zero. A real okay, hoe with. Not a, not a real. Like, the whole point was like trying to be a better hoe, not like a hoe. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. I get it. As it's Th body leaning. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And people should read the excerpt that Into just published. Yes. It's... With talking about this. Mm -hmm. But but I did wonder, you know, and, and I, I remember having moments like this, writing for the internet, yeah. getting started, you know, in my career as a writer, and also going, oh, is my grandma going to read this? How is this going to work out? Was that ever something you were stressed out about? Well, clearly, no. Uh, well, no, uh, <laughs> I think initially, um, I was taught to keep everything to yourself, and that information is a weapon. So... That's one of many things that I had to learn to overcome, mm -hmm. including the, the guilt and shame that comes with being Catholic a lot of times, mm -hmm. and like this fear of sex that I write about in the book. Um, for me, I just feel like just kind of growing up alone in that house, even beyond me being gay, is that we saw so much and we were just kind of told to keep it inside. Mm -hmm. And that just felt very like controlling and just 
I needed, once I started talking about myself more candidly, mm -hmm. I felt better. Okay. And one thing that I appreciated was that when I would write about things that were going on, even on my blog, um, rest in peace to cynical ones, uh, people really took to it and they would reach out. And honestly, I've done a lot of different types of writing, but the writing that has gotten the most attention from anything I've done is like when I actually use my story okay. to connect with people. Because I think one thing about the book is that ultimately, I want to, again, I want to make people laugh and make people think, but I also, I wrote something I wish I had when I was younger because I want people to feel like you're not alone. And I think there are a lot of different things that you don't necessarily have to be black and queer to identify with, but you get the, cru the crux of it. And I just want people to feel like there's someone there that understands. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, it, it makes some people upset that I'm saying so much about myself, but I can't be concerned with that. I did what I felt I needed to do, and I'm really proud of it. Yeah, and you should be. You absolutely should be. We're grateful for it. Um, okay, so Beyonce mm -hmm. uh, is, the, we, I don't say this casually, an important part of yes. your life story. The end, okay, the we're going to own that. Okay. Yes. My Lord and gyrator. <laughs> the Lord and gyrator. Yes, she is. Oh, amen. We are so fortunate. Won't she do it? <laughs> Under her eye. Every time. Yes. Under her eye. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so uh, what, what has Beyonce done for you? What does she mean for you? Um, I usually start off with, I'm black gay from Houston, so obviously, like, she's just the center for that alone. But I think with, um, I write in the book how she made me comfortable with, I think, parts of myself that were considered like feminine and mm -hmm. because of how men are raised to think you kind of don't want to embrace that part. I think the B-Day album has a lot of kind of subculture on top of subculture in it. Like it's New Orleans bounce or what they used to call sissy bounce or like all these black queer people influencing mm -hmm. and things. Like when that album came out it was also around the time that I was in New York City interning, um, going out and trying to be a thought and failing. <laughs> but just being free and like, not, like I used to never dance and like, I danced out loud. Mm -hmm. I didn't care so much about any of that. So on that, like she means something to me just for that. But also as a black person, she's country, she's black, and she doesn't dilute who she is to make more people come to her. And I think one thing about this book that was just so frustrating was that it was this idea that being black and queer meant that I was niche and no one mm. would, um, I would have to dilute myself or I'd have to live up to like some other type of narrative to be accessible in that space. Whereas I think with Beyonce, she's been so country and so black and so Houston this entire time. Mm -hmm. Outside of the first half of I Am Sasha Fierce, um, when she was doing like the Sarah McLachlan songs, which were cute, but that, that wasn't why I was there. Okay. Um, but other than that, she's been so herself and like she's made people come to her. Mm -hmm. So often some people are so worried about scaring white people and like if you just be your country mm -hmm. self that you won't get them. Like I'm myself, I, think, I knew the minute when someone, I don't know how, but she got an advanced copy, very nice white woman who was, said she was reading my book and knitting a sweater. And then she posted the sweater. It was lovely next to the book. She was like, I didn't get all of the references, but like I looked some of them up. I got it. And I was like, well, that's usually what, what I do been? when I'm reading some white people. So it's like, Hello. you can do, everybody use your Googles, you're fine. Mm -hmm. So like, but Peon, she's like an example of like, I can be myself and mm -hmm. I can still attain as much success as like allows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my testimony. That's your t hey, I, I live. We still need to be besties. I'm trying to get her the book. Like, okay, I was about to say, what's your plan to get your book to Beyonce? Um, there are some different routes. Um, I think, though, you know, you can go through, like, people who know, whatever. But honestly, I should probably just send it to Mama Tina's theater. Like, literally, I think Miss Tina is the, is the plug. I don't feel like she would go, she would go, hey, baby. I think she I would read it, it and think I'm a nice young man. Uh-huh. Because moms are reading this book. I don't uh -huh. know how I feel about that, but yes, moms are reading the book. <laughs> I can see it. And, mama, and like Beyonce would be like, no, mama, and then she put it on Instagram, like, I told Beyonce she should read yes. this book by this nice young man, but anyway, I can't, you know, I can I see just, the Instagram post. I need that, and maybe one day I'll have some gumbo <laughs> I with her. I really deserve. Because our gumbo look good. You absolutely deserve. Well, I know you, you're no stranger to giving advice. You do it very well I, with Into. Those questions are really fun. Yes, I mean, there is an irony, as Terry Gross pointed out, that um, <laughs> of me, of all people, having a advice column at Grindr asking people sex questions, but, but sure. You know, that's how it goes. So, uh, I love giving advice, too. Mm -hmm. We do diversity here, so we thought right. we would, like, you know, Let's let, go. give the throne to you. Here we go. This one. Woo, I'm excited. My man and I started dating three months ago. He recently introduced me to some of his childhood friends, and now all of them, and now um, out of all of them, I feel like I got stuck with the worst pick. I can't stop thinking about one of his friends in particular. We hit it off right away and have been texting each other for about a week. I'm not in love with my man yet, so should I ditch him and get with his friend? Okay, you trifling. Look, but you know what? <laughs> Life happens because things, like, that's very Coco from SWV. Um, that's very, like, 90s R&B thought. Um, I've been it. there before I and it ended back. So if you don't like the guy, first and foremost, break up with him. Mm. Um, 
I would probably advise not dating the friend unless it's some kind of connection that is so important and you just feel like you have to explore it. Yeah. That's going to get messy. You're probably going to ruin decades long of the friendship. But now I'm a terrible person, but like maybe you should pursue that. But yeah. if it's not that strong, just yeah. run away from everybody. You're not happy. Yeah. That aligns with my cost benefit yeah. analysis. I'm like, okay, there's going to be a cost to yeah. still being all right. But hey, when it's right, it hits. Okay, let's do a Beyonce one. Every time Beyonce comes on the radio, my boyfriend changes the station. Dump him. Okay, there we go. All right. Well, we don't do beefiest. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you be with somebody that don't like me? Look at that say? long question. It's like, we know. We know. Do we have time for one more? Okay. Um, I'm a reformed hoe. <laughs> uh, my new partner asked how many people I've slept with, and I actually did this in college, and I lied. Should I go back and tell him the truth, or should I just take it to the grave? I think I'm supposed to tell you to tell the truth, but um, you're already a liar now, so you might as well commit to it. <laughs> That's actually probably terrible advice, but like, honestly, if it's that hot, there's a reason you didn't say nothing. Listen, we stay in a practical queen, Yeah. so I get it. All right, I lied. Anyway, thank you for joining thank us, you for Michael. Me. Again, I Can't Date Jesus. This is a great book. Buy it, it's great affordable. Book. Um, get, and honestly, buy two copies. This is a great book to talk about with a friend. That's what I'm talking you about. You know what buy I mean? Multiple that's, copies. Buy two if you really bought that life. Again, it's available everywhere. You can get books and online. Congratulations. Thank you so much for having me. More AM to DM up next, y'all. Woo! Hey, I love it. It's just like.